Here are 10 things you need to be aware of before playing your first set on CDJs. Let's go. Did you know that the jog wheels on CDJs respond differently to the jog wheels on nearly all controllers? Let me explain why. So if I play two of the same tracks on CDJs and put them in time, now let's have a listen. If I wanted to nudge this out of time, listen, if I just do it slowly like this on the jog wheel, nothing changes at all. And I can keep going at this speed. And as long as I go at that speed, it's not going to change anything at all. It will only start to respond if I travel faster, as you can hear. So these sharp nudges are how we nudge the track to beat match on CDJs. Little nudges like this don't actually do anything on a CDJ. And this is because CDJs were developed off the back of turntables. So they wanted to emulate how it felt to nudge a turntable, to nudge a vinyl on a turntable. So you have to actually nudge the vinyl faster then it's actually spinning to make it go faster. So this is why this has been developed in this way, but this is not the same on a controller. So let me explain and show you on a controller. As you can hear, I can slowly nudge this round and eventually it starts to go out of time or brings it back in time. And this is because it just sends a message to the computer that we are moving faster on the jog wheel. It doesn't care whether we're going, you know, a sharp nudge or a slow nudge. It's moving it from one position to another, so it will adjust the um, waveform and move that in that exact same speed. So that's how it differs between CDJs and controller. So what I'd recommend to you is to get comfortable with sharp nudges like this on the jog wheel, even if you're using a controller, so that when you come to CDJs, you're, you feel confident keeping that beat matching going when you transition over to CDJs. You'll need to know how to get music onto the CDJs. One of the most common ways to do this is to export music to a USB drive. The USB drive can be plugged directly into the CDJs to play music from. Now it's highly recommended that you export your music through the Rekordbox software, which is developed by Pioneer DJ. This will allow, allow you to get all of your BPM information, grid information, key information, and waveform all loaded instantly. You can drag and drop files onto a USB and plug it into CDJs, but you won't get all of this information right away. So it's highly recommended to manage your music and then export it through the Rekordbox software. If you're using another software like Serato or Traktor, and you have all your music prepared in there, there are third-party applications to help you move your music to Rekordbox with all of the saved points like hot cues and loops to export to a USB. This is all covered in our Pioneer CDJ Masterclass course, where you can find out how to do all of this amongst much more. You can also use CDJs with a laptop by plugging in using some extra USB cables into the back of the CDJs. This is something called HID mode. This allows you to control your software with the CDJs and you don't have to have a USB stick with your music on. This is a great way, especially if you play with different software other than Rekordbox, such as Serato or Traktor, Virtual DJ, or even Algorithm, they're all supported on the CDJs. So you can plug your laptop directly in and play your set that way. If you're playing your first set in a club or a bar and you're rocking up to some CDJs, make sure you always carry two USBs with all the same music on, at least. This is because the link cable on the back of CDJs, which link one device to another, either might not be plugged in, there might not be a cable there, or maybe the port or the wire is faulty. This is a common thing to happen in venues is this port on the back can get quite faulty. So I'd always recommend having two USBs plugged in when you're playing on any equipment that's not your own and you're not sure what the state of that equipment is in. Always carry two USBs at least and make sure that the link cable does work. Let's say you've arrived to a set of CDJs, you've plugged in and you think you're ready to go, and you press play on one side, you can see it's playing, but there is no audio coming through the channel. There could be many reasons for this, but one of the most common ones is that the input selector at the top is set wrong. Because the mixer has so many different inputs, we need to make sure that they correlate what is at the top to what is plugged in at the back. For example, this CDJ is plugged into the line. If I switch this across, we can now hear the audio, which is what we want. 
always check this. If you've got a laptop plugged into the mixer, you might need to switch it over yourself onto the laptop settings or switch it back if you've got turntables plugged in. There's a phono option, for example. So that's something to be aware of is this input selector and making sure it correlates to what audio devices you have plugged into the mixer so that your channels are working correctly. We cover everything you need to know about the back of a DJ mixer, how to set up this gear, and what all of the inputs and outputs mean in our Pioneer CDJ course. Did you know that you can record your DJ set with a laptop by plugging directly into the DJ mixer? Once you plug into the DJ mixer, you may need to install the driver so that it connects to your computer. But after you've done that, you will then be able to go into something called the DJM utility. So here you can see I've got DJM 900 Nexus 2 setting utility, and you'll find that utility on your computer and you can open it up. Now, if I show you here, we can have this USB 9 and 10 as the mix or the record out. So then it basically means that whatever you're running through the USB here, you can record in your software because this is a sound card itself. So if I just quit off that, you could record it in any recording application now that you have on your computer. If you've got Rekordbox, you could record it internally within Rekordbox and set up the audio driver. But let's say for example, I use QuickTime player. I can literally go file, new audio recording, and then choose the DJM 900 Nexus 2. And now you'll see, if I just play something, you can see it's playing on the screen and I could just record that and I can record my sets and then save it after I've recorded. This is the same no matter what audio recording software you choose to use, just choose the DJM 900 Nexus 2 as the um, audio card within that recorder. You know, it could be Audacity, it could be QuickTime, like I say, it could be Ableton, whatever it is you choose, just set it up so that it's getting the audio from the mixer, you've got it plugged in, and then you can record your sets that way. This is a tip for anyone playing in a large club with a large sound system. This is in particular where you know that the mixer is sending audio to some amplifiers somewhere. If you've got the mixer sending audio directly to monitor speakers, this isn't as much of an issue, but it's still good practice to keep in mind. Please make sure that you never ever turn the power of the mixer off if the amps are still on. Now you might not know this in a club, so I would always recommend when you finish your set, if it's the end of the night, leave the mixer on and let the sound technician come and turn it all off because they will need to power it down from the amp first and then the mixer because it could create a surge and damage the sound system. So just good practice. If you are in a venue and you don't know the setup there, leave the mixer on, don't go turning everything off because it could actually damage the sound system. Just to sort of add to that, if you are gonna be turning mixers off, make sure that you turn all the levels down, you've not got any output coming out, you've not got anything playing, you've turned all the levels down so there isn't any sound output coming out as you turn it off. So that's just an extra little thing to practice, but like I say, I'd always just recommend leaving it on, especially if you're playing in a venue where you don't know how that sound system is set up. Anything on a Pioneer CDJ that has a little block before the name is a hold feature on the CDJ. You'll find it across various buttons on the CDJs, but the one I want to bring attention to is this utility setting. If you hold the menu button, you can go into the CDJ utilities on any model. Now, in there, what you can do is you can change all things like the LCD brightness and the jog display brightness. You can change all your settings like the quantize beat value and the beat jump beat value. Um, the way that the CDJs play, whether you've got the load lock on or off. And there's loads of different settings that you can set up in there. And it's just worth being aware of where they are so you can change them. Now, did you know all those settings you can actually apply to your USB within the Rekordbox software? So you can change all those settings to your desired preference, save it to your USB, and then when you plug your USB in, you can actually load those settings into the player. Just to show you where that is, if I go to source, you can see my USB here. I can go my settings load and I can click that and it says your settings were loaded to the player. You can see it went dim there because I haven't set anything up. This was what was standard on the USB. So it's changed it all and that's where I'd have to go into the utility here and go down to the display and bring this back up if I wanted them back to where they were, etc.
Be aware that hot cues on CDJs may respond differently to your DJ software. For example, in Serato and other DJ softwares, you might have something called a gate cue, which means when the track is paused, if you hold the hot cue, it just plays the track until you release the hot cue, then it goes back to where it was. Just like if you were holding the cue button on CDJs. Now, on CDJs, the hot cues trigger from that point. So if I press it, it starts playing the track. Even if it's paused, it jumps and starts playing the track. This is a setting that can be changed in Rekordbox. If you use a controller, you can choose to have gate cue on or off. Now, this is just something to be aware of. Like I said, if you're used to hot cues, you're having to go hold the hot cue and then press play. See how that's different. If you are in Serato, that would have just carried the track on playing, but it's different on CDJ. So make sure you're aware of that when using hot cues on CDJs. If you are playing a track and then you pause it and you hear this sound, don't be alarmed. As you can hear, it sounds like the track's stuttering and glitching. Now this is because we've got it the jog mode on CDJ. If I switch it to vinyl, it stops. The reason for this is CDJ mode on the jog wheel basically stutters the sound that's just in front of it so you can find your cue point. This is just something that was really useful for DJs pretty much before there were things such as waveforms on CDJs. On the older models, you might want to try and find that kick drum. So by hearing that stuttering sound, you could set your cue point easier. So something to be aware of. Um, don't be alarmed if it's like that. It's something you won't have come across on any controller. So yeah, if it's on CDJ mode and you get this stuttering, when you pause it, put it on vinyl mode. Let me know in the comments which one of these 10 was the one that you didn't know or the one that you found the most value in. I'd love to hear your feedback. And also remember, if you want to dive deep on CDJs, if you're at that stage in your career where you're moving on to CDJs and playing your first gigs, but you feel daunted by the setup that's in front of you, then make sure to check out our Pioneer CDJ Masterclass course. This course is fully developed for those DJs who are moving to CDJs. It covers the entirety of the CDJ setup, everything from plugging in, to getting your music on, to using all the effects, to what all of the buttons and features do, and making sure that you're confident with the technology that's in front of you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video just like this very soon.